Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. Today I have another cooking video for you. It's only two recipes but they're super easy and super yummy. So if you're interested in these recipes just stay tuned for the rest of the video. So first up we have these Mississippi chicken thighs with some mashed potatoes and I used bone in skin on chicken thighs but I just took the skin off of the chicken thighs and honestly not my favorite. Um, I really don't even love chicken thighs as it is but I really hate bone in chicken. I don't know it just changes the flavor to me but it worked out. I mean it still tasted really good, but I just prefer to use chicken breast or boneless, skinless chicken thighs. But like I said, I'm just taking the skin off because I didn't want it to turn into too much fat in the finished dish or whatever. And I'm trimming the excess fat off. The skin is super easy to remove. You just kind of hook your finger under it and then just pull and it should come right off super easy. I did leave the bone in because I did not know how to or feel like cut around the bone um so i just threw them in there as is and once i got all my chicken thighs in i'm going to go ahead and add a packet of ranch seasoning a packet of au jus mix and you can totally add some pepperoncinis but my husband doesn't like them so i left them out i think it would add such a great flavor to it but like i said my husband doesn't like it so i left it out um, the recipe calls for like a stick of butter or something, but that's just way too much. So I added in a couple of tablespoons of this garlic and herb butter, and then I put my crock pot on low and I just let it go all day. I think it went about six or seven hours, but you really can't overcook chicken thighs unless you absolutely try. But this is how it turns out once everything's done and it's super tender. Everything just falls apart. Um, you can shred it I guess you would call it but I'm just mixing it up and pulling out the bones as I see them and I made sure I got all six bones out Okay, now for the mashed potatoes, I just have some regular russet potatoes that I've peeled and chopped up and I'm going to add those to cold water in the pot and I'm going to turn that pot on high. I'm actually adding chicken bouillon to my water, but you can just use salt if you want. I just think the chicken bouillon gives it a little more flavor and um, yeah, we just like it like that. <laughs> But once my potatoes are done, um, they cooked for about 10 to 15 minutes. You want them to be fork tender. I'm going to drain them and then add them back to that same pot and then add in some milk and some of that garlic and herb butter, some salt, and then just smash them up with a potato masher. So you can smash them to however like thickness you want or whatever. Um, some people like bigger chunks, some people don't like any chunks, um, we are not too picky on our mashed potatoes, but if they are a little thick, you can just thin them out with some more milk or butter or something like that. Um, I always give them a taste test and just see if they need anything. These needed more salt, so that's what I added, and yeah, that's it. Super easy. And this is the final product. It's really good. It has so much flavor. Like I said, I do prefer chicken breast to the thighs, but I mean... Hey, it's kind of all the same and it still turned out really delicious. And for the last recipe, I have this, I'm not really sure what it's called. We always call it fried cabbage with some fried potatoes, but I mean, they have like water in them, so I'm not sure if they're really fried, but 
I don't know what happened in the first part. I just put in some bacon grease and chopped up some cabbage really small. This is one head of cabbage. And you just want to saute it until it starts to get a little bit of color on it. You don't want to burn it by any means. But like I said, just a little bit of color. It adds so much flavor. And then once you get your cabbage kind of cooked down, you can go ahead and add your sausage. Or you can saute your sausage in a separate pan if you want. I just hate doing dishes, so I try to do everything in as little dishes as possible. But this is just chicken kielbasa, I think. Um, it doesn't matter whatever type of sausage you want to use. Just add it straight on in, mix that up, and let it saute and get some color on it as well. Next, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of chicken bouillon and a cup of water. You can definitely use chicken broth if that's what you have. But I'm just going to add that straight in. Let it cook uncovered until most of the liquid has evaporated. And for the fried potatoes, I'm just going to get started using my mandolin. And I'm going to slice these potatoes up. Um, be careful. This thing is sharp. I have cut myself on it many times. But it's really hard to use that little tool. At first, I do like to use my hands, but it just slices them up super fast, all the same length, uh, width. And then I'm just going to add those potatoes straight to a pan with some bacon grease, um, move them around a little bit. Add your seasonings. I use salt, garlic powder, and onion powder. And then I'm going to add about a half a cup of water, cover that, and let it cook. And then I'm going to go back and stir my cabbage around, just making sure everything is cooking through evenly. You can see there's a lot of liquid in there. And that's what we want to evaporate, but it's going to leave all the flavor behind and be super delicious. And back to the potatoes. You just want to turn them every so often. You don't want them to burn, um, but you do want them to get a little bit of color. And I'm not sure why this looks so burnt on camera. It did not look that burnt in real life. And they tasted amazing. So, again, I don't know why it looks like that. But um, you do want your potatoes to get some color, but definitely not burnt. And this is the final product. This is super easy and cheap. Um, and it goes a long way. And my family really enjoyed it. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more cooking videos like this. And I'm really glad you're here. Thanks. Bye.